is the Ford Show starring Dana Shore with Peel and Hayes and Robert Emma Dolan and his orchestra. And our guest for tonight, Johnny Mercer, all presented by the Ford Dealers and Lincoln Mercury Dealers of America. And here is Dana Shore. Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day! Plenty of sunshine is heading my way. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth that's at door. Everything is satisfactory. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Speaking of songs... I know. He's written a song to show Johnny Mercer when he gets here. Hey, that's right. It's a beautiful ballad, Dinah. It's called, I Want a Girl Just Like the Girl That Turned My Father Down. (laughs) How'd you know I'd written a song? Elementary, my dear Peter Lynn Hayes. Johnny Mercer's coming, so you're a songwriter. When Dick Haynes was here, you were a singer. When Van Johnson came, you were a romantic lover. Frankly, Peter, I shudder to think of the day when we invite Lassie. I do all right. Hey, Dan, Lassie gives me an idea for a song. If Lassie can herd sheep every day, why haven't I heard from you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dan, I don't know how we got off on this. I do want to impress Johnny, but it's not so I can be a songwriter. Johnny has a record company, and I have a terrific idea for a children's album. Huh? Well, you know these children records everyone's making, Tubby yeah. the Tuba, Rollin' the Rabbit, Billy the Boa Constrictor, Sidney the Smoke. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Those records send me dashing for hours the aspirin. Dying. <laughs> what you said. Anyway, the kids play these things all the time. Their poor parents get patter punchy. Now, I have an idea for a children's record album that the parents can listen to also. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Bobby, music, please. My dear children, this is the story of Peter the Pumpkin. Once upon a time in a little vegetable garden in California... There grew a pumpkin named Peter. Peter the pumpkin was very happy in the garden with his friends, Sam the spinach, Louis the lettuce, and Sinatra the string bean. <laughs> Sometimes Peter the pumpkin's friends would get bored with just vegetating in the garden, and Louis the lettuce would say, Hey, Peter, I feel like going stepping. Let's pick up a couple of tomatoes. But Peter the pumpkin would say no, because he was in love. He loved Tilly the tomato. Now, Tilly was a very beautiful, proud tomato. She came from a theatrical background. All her ancestors had been thrown at actors. But Peter the Pumpkin had other rivals for Tilly's affection. There was Mimic the Navy Bean and Kilroy the Cucumber. But Louis the Lettuce used to say, Peter, don't worry about Kilroy the Cucumber, because every week or so, he goes off and gets pickled. And he goes around writing on the walls. Cucumber was here. So all our friends lived quietly in the garden. They would be visited by their friend, Busy the Bee. Busy the Bee always brought news. One day he said, Kids, I understand the farmer has the plan about Nimit the Navy Bee. He's going to cross the Navy Bee with fountain pens so they'll grow underwater. But all this was gossip, and the little garden remained peaceful, and Peter the Pumpkin still carried the torch for Tilly the Tomato. His love ripened as he did. On St. Valentine's Day, he wrote her a poem. He said, Of all the tomatoes on all the vines, 
It's just for you, my poor heart crying. Let's see each other's valentine before your pit by Mr. Hines. But Tilly just ignored him. She was a pretty cold tomato. Then fate struck. The farmer had a daughter, Cinderella. And one day her fairy godmother magically turned Peter the Pumpkin into a beautiful coat. Well, when Tilly saw what had happened to Peter, you never saw such a tomato surprise. And the next day when Peter the Pumpkin, now Peter the Coat, was rolling merrily along, Tilly gave him a flirtatious wink. Whereupon poor Peter became so flustered that he crashed into a tree wrecked forever. So the moral of our story is, remember, fellows, even though you think you're some pumpkin, a tomato can always fit your wagon. Tell of the Calypso singers, those wonderful singers from Trinidad who have temporized lyrics on any subject. Well, tonight we have with us Sir Lancelot, the most famous of all the Calypso singers. He's going to sing for us now, and we're especially interested in this particular song because it has a subject dear to our hearts. Sir Lancelot, if you please. 
Forty, forty in your future, you may have to wait. But it's worth waiting for, forty, forty is greater. V8 or six, six or V8. The Ford's so fine, it's worth the wait. I heard a young girl speaking the other day to a gentleman beside her say that she adored, really adored, a brand new wonderful Ford. That Ford, she say, has the king size brake, and to save on gas and oil, the Ford has what it takes. Listen, everyone, she say, I tell you the truth, that engine in the new Ford, it runs all nice and smooth. Whether it's now or whether it's later, the Ford in your future couldn't be greater. V8 or 6, 6 or V8, the Ford so fine it works away. Thanks a lot, Sir Lancelot. You know, I guess tonight there's so many great things in the music world that we'll have to handle each of them separately. So... Ladies and gentlemen, we present now the president of Capitol Records, Johnny Mercer. Thank you, Diana. <clears throat> it's a pleasure to be here. And, uh, Sounds like the president of Capitol <laughs> Records. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the famous author of such songs as Black Magic, Atchison, and Topeka, and Santa Fe, and countless others, Two Voice Johnny Mercer. Thank you, Diana. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, uh-huh, thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present a fine singer singing a new tune he's just recorded, Movie Tonight, Johnny Mercer. Uh, it's a... Oh, come on, let's sing. <laughs> Taking baby to the movie tonight. We're getting groovy in the movie tonight. Baby and me. Up on the screen. When you know who is being moody and me. You'll find another couple feeling the scene. Baby and me. better than I write them. Oh, gee, Johnny. Hearing you always makes me so nostalgic. You take me right home to the south. Well, Donna, honey, if I ever get to yearning for a whiff of honeysuckle, all I do is listen to you. Ham hocks, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Now, Peter, let's not be cynical. After all, Johnny and I are both from the South. Savannah, Georgia, that's me. Johnny, you ever felt the urge to go back to Georgia? What, and get made a governor? <laughs> but you do miss it now, don't you? Look, just a moment, you two. The furthest South I've ever been is the Phil Harris program. <laughs> all I know about the South is what I hear in song. Well, believe me, Peter, the South is wonderful, different. Oh, yes? Well, I'd like to find out what gives with all this glamorous stuff about Dixie. Have either of you two ever seen a river called the Swanee? Uh, no. Not me. Mm -hmm. Have you ever actually eaten or seen anyone eating salt and bread, possum, black corn, bones, chitin' with hog jowls and pot makeup? Uh, uh, no. Uh Uh-uh. Have you ever actually heard banjos scrambling underneath a magnolia tree while you were covered with honeysuckle vines while the mockingbird made you all the day? Hello? I, I, I don't think so. Not me. Then what is different about the South? No Republicans. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Johnny. Peter, the South is lovely. Of course, songwriters do exaggerate. That's true, Johnny. Well, I... Yeah, they exaggerate in everything. Now, Dinah's right. Take a number like Blue Skies. Nothing but blue skies do I see in California. <laughs> <laughs> and, Peter, how about that other one? I'll close my eyes to everyone but you. <laughs> close my eyes to everyone. In this town, that guy's got to get run over. <laughs> Kids, I, I still think you're hitting the barge too hard. All right, we'll show you. Take that song you just did, the um, the one about the wonderful evening at the movie. You mean movie tonight? Uh-huh. Now, let's examine this wonderful evening. I'll be the girl, and you be the fella, and Pete will do all the other parts. Music, Bobby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the real story behind a tip to the movies. Here is a typical American couple at home. Honey. Yes, dear. What about seeing a movie? I'm in the mood for some good popcorn. <laughs> What'll we see? Well, I look in the paper. What about Anna and the King of Siam? I don't like double features. <laughs> what else is playing? How about the humorous? I've seen it. What about the razor's edge? I've seen it. What about the duel in the sun? Who's in it? Jennifer Jones, Gregory Peck, Walter Houston, Joseph Cotton, Lionel Barrymore, Lillian Gish. What's it about? It says here, violence, love, and death in Technicolor. <laughs> I think I've seen it. Who else is in it? Who else is in it? Charles Dingle. I've seen it. <laughs> well, what about the uh, Jolson story? What's that about? It's the life of Eddie Cantor. <laughs> Oh, silly title. What else is playing? The happy pair finally selects a picture and arrive at the theater. Immediate changing on all fours! Immediate changing on all fours! Here, dear, I got the ticket. Oh, swell. Two hour wait in the lobby, please. <laughs> Wait, but you said immediate seating on all floors. Well, there is immediate seating on all floors, but you people wanted to sit on seats. <laughs> huh? Honey, here's two, quick. Okay, let's take them. Pardon me. 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 Here we are. These seats are taken! <laughs> oh, Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. They finally get seats. These are pretty good seats, honey. Shh, the picture. Okay. I'm sorry, my dear, that this had to be. But it has to be because what must be, must be. You see, this must end between us. Don't feel bad. It's nothing you could help. It's just that you're so deucedly ugly. <laughs> but believe me, we can still be friends, and if you ever need Where's a friend... Where's the popcorn? Here. Believe me, I'll come to your side whether I'm in Punjab or in Newark. Say, but now it must... Something's end. wrong with the it sound in here. Be, and what has to be, has to be. Fate has decreed it, and we are but pawns of that great uh, chess player on the tennis say, court of life. Thank you. Why don't you grow a mustache? So this is it. I thought you didn't like this mustaches. Is it, Only on those, you. My father has be. one. Oh, you and your father's mustache. And pray, what is meant by that, pray? 
Whether I'm, I'm sick of you always going, going for these hams. You the never say I look as good as any leading I man. Come. I would have, but you weren't with me when I saw Dracula. I'm going home. Me too. So it is goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Oh, oh shut up. from the movies to the stage from the great New York musical hit Finian's Rainbow here's the lovely song How Are Things in Glockamora and that fellow you hear playing that fine piano is none other than our own Bobby Dolan <laughs> stuff about women drivers, well, practically none of that is true. And to show you what we think of women drivers around here, here's Tom Hanlon quoting one. Right, Dinah. A woman whose job requires her to drive alone 40,000 miles a year puts it mildly when she says, quote, my car must give me trouble-free operation. So we're mighty glad to hear from Helen Duffy, who travels out of New Orleans for a candy company. She says one of the main reasons she wouldn't drive anything but a Ford is the expert service she finds everywhere she goes at Ford dealers. Well, friends, that expertness is no happen chance. When you bring your Ford back home for service, the work's done with four can't be equal advantages. If a new part is needed, you get a precision-made, genuine Ford part made to fit right. And the mechanics who do the job are not only Ford trained, but they also work by factory-approved methods. What's more, they use special Ford equipment. No one else can give you such competent Ford service for the trouble-free operation that makes driving a real pleasure. So take a tip from Helen Duffy to keep your car in top-notch condition. Do as she does. Bring it back home regularly to the man who knows your Ford best, your friendly Ford dealer. Did you ever hear the story of the Dixieland band? Let me tell you, brother, that 
that the music was grand. They had piano and a clarinet. Only thing they needed was a second cornet. And that's what led to the ruin, ruin of the Dixieland band. When the folks would holler for the maple leaf rag, they would get to swinging, but the trumpet would drag. They had to keep him cause he played so sweet, but they needed someone who could give them a beat. Someone who swung with the rhythm, rhythm of the Dixieland band. He'd play so sweetly. Instead of playing, couldn't play right. Finally, he fixed him on a Saturday night. He hit a note that was off the chord. Apoplexy got him and they went to the Lord. And now, folks, here is a sample. Listen to the Dixieland band. Our guest will be Robert Montgomery. Robert Montgomery? Uh-huh. Well, I'll sure be listening, Diana, because I really am a movie fan. Ah, uh, swell, Johnny. Good night, and thanks for coming around. I had a swell time, honey. Good night. Goodbye, Peter. Goodbye, my dear. Uh, Sorry. Peter, hmm? Say good night to the... but it must be. Say good night to is, Johnny. This is the very end. No, wait. It must be. You Steve, we have to go off and just... Some... Peter, wait just now. I have a thing. And I have to... Can I say good night? Good night, folks. again next Wednesday night, friends, when the Ford dealers and Lincoln Mercury dealers of America again bring you Dinah Shore with Peter Lynn Hayes and Robert Emmett Dolan and his orchestra. Our guest will be Robert Montgomery. Johnny Mercer wrote this too. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.